Let's start with the classic matrix choice. You take the blue pill, you will live a life that is nice but ordinary. Or you take the red pill, you will live a life of extremes. A life of celebrated success but with inevitable lows. But before you choose, let's think about this question. In Nepotus later show the queen's gambit, beneath the chess play, the drug addiction, and a woman surpassing in a traditionally man's game lies the question of what really makes a person successful. How much does talent really matter? We're told from childhood that talents or smartness plus hard work equals success, but the reality is that it's not so simple. In the Queen's Gambit, there seems to be four other variables that contributed to Beth becoming the world's greatest chess player, starting with Mr. Scheibel, who was willing to teach chess to Beth once he notices her talents, or rather, she makes her talent known to him. We see that community and support plays a big role in Beth's success. As Beth gets more successful, the more support she gets from her opponents to her adopted mother to this Christian group. A big part of why Beth was able to be Borgov is because Jolene first lends Beth the money to go to Russia. When her match with Borgov adjourns, Benny and her chess friends surprises Beth by analyzing her game all the way from New York and give her tips for possible next moves. But before you go, oh we're not giving Beth enough credit for winning, of course, Beth has to deliver herself. The point is that the show highlights why the Russians are they number one suits? at chess. It's because they played together as a team especially during adjournments. They help each other out. Us Americans, we work alone because we're all such individualists. So, lesson one, success is never achieved alone. But no matter how strong your support system is, it's still up to you to be able to face the hardships. The thing is, Beth is an incredibly strong-minded individual. Back in those days, chess was considered a man's game, but this didn't register to Beth, and even when Beth realizes it, she couldn't care less. We'll have a woman section. In fact, Beth is a super confident person, and I think this is what really sets her apart from another equally talented person. It would have been so easy for Beth to just give in to society's definition of womanhood. Just look at Elma, who was talented in music, but her talent is never realized because she wasn't confident enough to pursue it. I'd always had it in my mind to one day play in an orchestra. Alma is the quintessential product of her generation, whereby a woman lives a life for men. I didn't expect you for another week. But even with Beth's insane confidence level, she sometimes still doubt her own abilities, which is why she turns to drugs and alcohol. It's a common misconception amongst top achievers that they need enhancers to perform. Take Sia, for example. We all know Sia's music, but Sia would not have been the artist today if she hadn't saved herself from addiction. Sia wrote all her hit songs after becoming sober. So, lesson two, success requires a strong and healthy mind. What are you reading about? Pawn structure analysis. Chess, chess, chess. Yes, chess Sounds is the exciting. only thing it Beth is. thinks about. Even right after Beth and Harry have sex, she goes back to her chess books. The fact is that no matter how talented you are, you still need to train. Malcolm Gladwell wrote about the 10,000 hour rule, which is that to truly master a skill, you need to spend around 10,000 hours doing it. Beth spends almost every waking moment studying chess, but she was only able to do all this work because I'm not obsessed with it the way one has to be to win it all. The way you are. She had an unparalleled passion for chess. Honestly, there's no way anyone can spend so much time doing something they don't love enough. So, lesson three, passion helps fuel success. And lastly, along with passion, Beth has this crazy drive and determination to beat the competition. I might even go as far as to say that competition is probably the most important reason for Beth's success. You have to get past me first. I'm planning on that too. Winning is the thing that really motivates Beth to outdo herself at every game. And through her journey to beat Borgov, she ultimately becomes the best chess player in the world. So, lesson four, embrace competition because competition will push you beyond what you think you can do. Now, let's go back to my matrix question. Would you choose a life that is nice but ordinary or a life of extremes? I frame this as a choice because in some ways success is a choice and talent is just the beginning of success. More often than not, we as a society place a lot of emphasis on talent because it feels easier to justify other people's success by simply saying that they're talented. Laszlo Polgar had an extreme belief that a genius is not born, but is educated and trained. When a child is born healthy, it is a potential genius. And if you're thinking, is this guy for real? 
Polgar put his theory into action and he started training all three of his daughters on chess once they were born and all of them actually became world-class chess champions. One of his daughters, Judith Polgar, even became the youngest person to achieve the title of Grandmaster at 15 years and 4 months old. I know, I don't even know what I was doing at 15. But success comes to people at different age and that is if you even choose to go for it at all. So the next time you feel like you're not talented enough for success, perhaps this video can give you the encouragement to think otherwise. There are many variables at play for success to be realized and it's up to you to stack the odds in your favor. And also for you to define your own success. Now, shall we choose red pill or blue pill?